Here now is Faith to Live By with Pastor Barber. Psalm 18, verses 16 and 17. He took me from on high. He took me and sent, drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from those who hate me, for they were too mighty for me. Tim Sturby begins our program by singing, When He Reached Down His Hand For Me. Once my soul was astray from the heavenly way, I was Bible has the answer. You have provided the questions and we search the scriptures, God's holy word, in order to find the answers. Question number one, what does Colossians chapter one 
and verse 24 mean? Here we read Paul writing, Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I do my share on behalf of his body, Christ's body, which is the church, in filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions. There are three parts to this. First of all, Paul says, Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake. That is a strange statement to our ears, but Paul says this is a natural part of what it is to walk as a follower of Christ. Christ said we are to take up our cross daily and follow after him. And sufferings are a part of the walk of faith in Christ. Secondly, Paul says, in my flesh I do my share on behalf of his body, which is the church. Paul is simply saying that he, as an apostle of Christ Jesus, he has exerted himself, and at various times he does bring this to the fore, that he has in more travels, in more beatings, in more hardships, in more sleepless nights, having the pressure of the churches weighing heavy upon him, he is deeply concerned and he is extending, he is exerting himself for the cause of Christ. Now I suspect that the questioner is especially concerned about the third point that Paul makes here in filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions. Let me share with you two principles of scriptural a proper, appropriate scriptural interpretation. First of all, it is that we compare Scripture with Scripture, and where there are two por portions of Scripture, one clearer and one perhaps a little more challenging to understand, the clearer or the simpler declaration is used in order to help us with the more vague, we might say, or the more challenging word of uh, Scripture. Paul, when he was on the Damascus Road and the Lord appears to him, he says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Saul was not specifically persecuting Jesus, we would say, at that point. He was persecuting the followers and seeking to make them recant their faith in Christ. But Christ makes such an association with us that it's when a believer feels the lash, Christ also in that. And the Lord, when he would send and he would speak to the man who would be sent to Saul to pray for him, he would say, I will show him, I will show Saul how much he must suffer for my sake. You find that in Acts chapter 9. Now, Paul, as Saul became known, he did indeed come to know much of the sufferings of Christ. He came to know much of what is taking place. But here, as he writes in Colossians, he's most adamantly holding forth Jesus Christ as the all-sufficient one. And so is Paul saying that there is something insufficient in Christ? That would be utter madness because the whole driving point of this epistle is that Christ is the all-sufficient one. He is the mighty one. And so Paul, as he gathers up and he says, I fill up, in filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions. He is simply saying, I am in service. I am doing everything that Christ would have me to do. I am surrendering myself to him. And that is what we ought to do as well for our Lord and Master who has given all for us. Question number two. Do we not violate the Lord's clear command of Matthew chapter 23, verses 8 to 10, with all of our various titles. Jesus said, Do not be called rabbi, for one is your teacher, and you are all brothers. And do not call anyone on earth father, for one is your father, 
he who is in heaven. Do not be called leaders, for one is your leader, that is Christ. I think the point is perfectly well taken that we often do violate the word of the Lord by clamoring for tighter titles and for uh, business cards which need to be seemingly extended because of all of the stuff that is attached to them. Here I'm especially talking about within the church of Jesus Christ. And yet, as we come to the scriptures, we find that the Apostle Paul himself, he uses titles, he says, am I not an apostle? And there were those who were deprecating or putting down the apostle Paul and his authority. There was a time when Paul needed to stand up and say, look, I am an apostle. I am a servant of Jesus Christ. I am a slave of Jesus Christ. He, was, he would always be perfectly clear on that, but he would also say, I am also one with authority. Now, Jesus most certainly here is outlining and he is saying there is all too many times when this whole business of honoring is taken too far. The scripture does say honor where honor is due and sometimes that is lacking, but we need to have a wise and godly and thoughtful balance and scriptural immersing ourselves in the scripture to know what would Christ have us to do and then to proceed. And where we clamor, where we clamor, clamor for titles or, or all of these things for recognition, we are off the mark and we are indeed dishonoring our Lord and Savior by all of this clamor, clamor for titles. Thank you for these questions. If you have an interest in hearing once again one of these questions, you can go to our website where the text is given there. If you wish to submit a question to us for the Bible has the answer, you may write to us at Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C, 2H6. Lois and Jan, now join with me as we sing together Grace. So 
I'm delighted to announce another new music project by the Faith to Live By musicians. God So Loved the World. 13 songs, solos, duets, trios, as well as the full group singing two songs. Here are just a few of the 13 songs, Saved by Grace, Now I Belong to Him, Jesus Paid It All, Pass Me Not, Have You Any Room for Jesus, His Name Lives On, and seven more titles. This CD, in, as with all of our productions on Faith to Live By from Resources, they are sent out free in postage paid simply upon your request. If you wish to have a copy, write to us, Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6, or call us toll free 1-833-367-3852. Also, our website, faithtoliveby.ca, has a means of you requesting a CD to be mailed to you, or you can go there and, at no charge whatsoever, download the 13 audio files directly to your tablet or phone or computer.
Indeed, God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son into this world to die upon Calvary's cross for you and for me. At the end of the gospel accounts, we then transition into the acts of the apostles. Many times people have said it would be better to term this fifth book of the New Testament the acts of the Holy Spirit, for it was empowered by the Holy Spirit that these apostles went into the world in order to pro proclaim Christ, come in the flesh, crucified on Calvary's cross, buried, raised gloriously, and ascended into heaven, where we now await him to come, but he preparing heaven for us, and also interceding at the right hand of God the Father on our behalf. Luke wrote his gospel account with the counsel and the help of the Apostle Paul, and then he goes one step farther than other evangelists, Matthew, Mark, or John, and he gives to us this Acts of the Apostles, and here is how he begins. The first account, he is referring back to his gospel, which he wrote of Jesus' life. The first account I composed, Theophilus, both of these books are directed, they are addressed to a certain man by the name of Theophilus. The first account I composed, Theophilus, about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up to heaven after he had, by the Holy Spirit, given orders to the apostles whom he had chosen. We remember in the gospel accounts how that Jesus, after a night of prayer, called to him 12 men who would walk with him. They would be his disciples for three years. They were in the school of Jesus Christ, and they had a front row privileged seat, a front row privileged position of seeing Christ, of hearing every word he spoke, and not only those which were uttered in public, but also in those private moments and those times when he was secluded alone with his disciples. These men, they were there and they heard it all. They saw it all except for brief glimpses where Jesus was alone or with just the inner three. What a privilege. Jesus had called disciples. Now they have changed from disciples to apostles. You see, apostle means a sent one, someone who is sent with a message. It could be a religious message, or it could be a political message in the first century world, but there were many apostles. These were apostles of Jesus Christ, sent by Christ, empowered by the Spirit, even as Jesus said that they would be. After he had, by the Holy Spirit, given orders to the apostles whom he had chosen, you see, these men, they were under orders. They were not going at their own behest, but they were going as men who had been captivated, men who had been conscripted into Christ's service, and they were going at his charge and command. To these, to these apostles, Jesus also presented himself alive after his suffering, after Calvary's cross, by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over a period of 40 days and speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God. Oh, they could have talked about many things about what was it like to hang upon that cross? What was it like to have your dead body placed in that stone cold tomb? What was it like to come back alive once again? Jesus comes and he speaks to them about that which is of greatest importance, not trivial information, but he speaks to them about the kingdom of God, for that is why Christ had originally come into this world, in order that sons and daughters 
bound for hell might become sons and daughters of God, bound for heaven, bound for the celestial city, and for heaven everlasting. Concerning the things of the kingdom of God, and Jesus gathering them together, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised, which you heard of from me. Indeed, John chapter 14, John chapter 16, Jesus had spoken about the Holy Spirit and the empowerment that these disciples would have from the Holy Spirit. Jesus reminds them and he says, wait, wait. He did not tell them how long they would have to wait. And they were clueless as to that. But he says, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And when they were coming together, they asked him, Lord, is it at this time you are restoring the kingdom to Israel? And Jesus, he said, oh, don't worry about the things of this world but set your eyes upon those things which are to come and delight in them and glory in them and rejoice in them. Are you setting your mind upon the things of this world? Oh, set your mind upon the things of Christ and the kingdom of God and rejoice in that and live for that, a surrendered life to Jesus Christ today and every day. Yes, there's room. At the cross for you. Thank you for joining Pastor Barber today. Please watch for Faith to Live By again next Sunday at this same time on this same station. Until then, Faith to Live By prays that the peace of God will fill your heart and that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Pastor Barber would love to hear from you. The mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. 